Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this chart, no, that's not the U.S. stock market. This is the SSE Composite Index. This is the Chinese stock market. Now, if you guys remember, I tried to dig up the video. If you can find it, let me know. I did a video, I think, when the SSEC, uh, SSEC or whatever was around here, 3000. Maybe it was 2000. I don't remember. Um, but you can see from, I did a search here on Google, you can see Brother John F. China, this is what it brings up, uh, from 2013, China, the next world superpower, next world superpower, silver update, China bashers, uh, back from 2011, China, uh, looping Chinese silver, uh, from 2013, Chinese century, um, so I've been talking about this for quite some time, the recent video I did was on this SSEC Chinese stock market index. And if you remember, I told you that if you could manage to open a brokerage account in Chinese currency, the renminbi, the yuan, whatever, and use that to buy Chinese stocks, you were going to be rich. Now, this is the weekly chart of what's happened. I think I said it back in here somewhere. But you can see, you know, a lot of people say, oh, this is the most incredible bubble. No, it's not. It's not at all. And you can see it's actually a breakout. The low that has been the low, it doesn't show on this. It shows on the Yahoo chart. But the Chinese stocks have been going sideways for, for decades. And uh, the wealth that's built up in China, the real wealth that's built up in China, has been tremendous over the last two decades or so but it hasn't been reflected in the stock market. It was inevitable that it would be reflected in the stock market. Um, this is not a bubble top. This is actually a breakout, believe it or not. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this market went to 50,000. Uh, that's the kind of wealth. And I told you at the time that Jimmy Rogers had pointed out, you know, when he was buying Germany, uh, they said, you know, what stocks do you want to buy? He said, I don't even want to know. Just buy a basket of the most, uh, the best performing German stocks right now. I plan to own them for the next 10 years at a minimum. Don't even tell me the companies you're buying me. Just buy me blue chip German stocks across the board because I think the biggest bull market in the history of the world is going to happen there. And he was right, of course. And that's what's happening in China right now. Uh, will this correct? Yeah, it might correct back to 3,500, but it, it might run all the way to 10,000 before it even has a correction. Um, I think this thing has a long, long ways to go. Um, so, of course, now we're seeing panic articles everywhere about this uh, Chinese stock market being a bubble, and it, it's uh, it's nowhere near a bubble. Trust me on that one. So uh, let's get to another story here. This is, again, another story on the war on cash. This is uh, uh, Potter Tannenbaum's acting man blog. Now we have Switzerland joining in. Uh, the war on cash migrates to Switzerland. Banks increasingly refuse cash withdrawals. Switzerland, Switzerland joins the fun. The war on cash is proliferating globally. It appears that the private members of the world's banking cartels are increasingly joining the fun, even if it means trampling on the rights of their customers. Yesterday we came across an article at Zero Hedge in which Dr. Salerno of the Mises Institute notes that J.P. Morgan Chase has apparently joined the war on cash by restricting the use of cash in selected markets, and we covered that one. This reminded us immediately that we have just come across another small article in the local European press in which the Swiss pension fund manager discusses his plight with the Swiss National Bank's bizarre negative interest rate policy. In Switzerland, this policy has long ago led to negative deposit rates at the commercial banks as well. The difference to other jurisdictions is, however, that negative interest rates have become so pronounced that it is by now worth it to simply withdraw one's cash and put it in an insured vault. Having realized this, said pension fund manager, after calculating that he would save at least 25,000 Swiss francs per year on every 10 million Swiss francs deposit by putting the cash into a vault, told his bank that he was about to make a rather big withdrawal very soon. After all, as a pension fund manager, he has a fiduciary duty to his clients. If he can save money based on a technicality, he has to do it. What happened next 
is truly stunning. Surely everybody is aware that Switzerland regularly makes it to the top three on the list of countries with the highest degree of economic freedom. At the same time, it has a central bank whose board members are wedded to Keynesian nostrums similar to those of other central banks. This is no wonder as nowadays economists are trained in an academic environment that is dripping with the most vicious statism imaginable. As a result, withdrawing one's cash is evidently regarded as an interference with the Swiss National Bank's monetary policy goals. Thus, SRF reports, since the National Bank has introduced negative interest rates, pension funds in the country are in trouble. Banks are passing the negative rates on to them. This results in the saved pension money shrinking instead of producing a return. A number of pension funds are therefore thinking about keeping their money in an external vault instead of leaving it in bank accounts. One fund manager showed that for every CHF $10 million in pension money, his fund would save $25,000. In spite of the costs involved in the vault, rent, cash, transportation, and other expenses. However, as our research team has found out, there's one bank that refuses to pay out money in such large amounts. The editorial team has gotten hold of a letter from a Swiss bank in which it tells its customer, a pension fund manager, we are sorry that within the time period specified, no solution corresponding to your expectation could be found. Bank expert Hans Geiger says that this is the most definitely not legal. This is most definitely not legal. The pension fund has a, has a site account and has a contractual right to dispose of its money on hand. Sorry, those are sirens on my end. Indeed, although we all know that fractionally reserved banks literally don't have the money their customers hold in demand deposits, the contract states clearly that customers may withdraw their funds at any time on demand. The maturity of site deposits is precisely zero. So how come the unnamed large bank, they should have named it just to see what happens, is so bold as to break the law by refusing to pay out funds in a demand deposit? Note here, that is indeed breaking the law as there is nothing in Swiss legislation that states that banks are allowed to refuse or delay servicing withdrawals from demand deposits upon request. The answer is that it has probably received a directive from the Swiss National Bank. Note here that these directives are not legally binding. And then we'll skip down to the conclusion. It is undoubtedly a huge red flag when in one of the countries considered to be a member of the highest economic freedom in the world club, commercial banks are suddenly refusing their customers access to their cash. This money doesn't belong to the banks and it doesn't belong to the central bank either. If this can happen in prosperous Switzerland based on some nebulous notion of the collective good, which its unelected central planners can arbitrarily determine and base decisions upon, it can probably happen anywhere. Consider yourself warned. As the modern day fiat money system inevitably cruises toward its final denouement, individual rights will come increasingly under attack as the world's ruling elites and centrally directed banking cartels begin to batten down the hatches. Better continue stacking and keep a pile of this within grabbing distance after all, it can be purchased at a generous discount these days. And there's a picture of gold. Now, and by the way, I think he has, see, to donate bitcoins. So um, this may actually cause a big rush into the cryptocurrencies, uh, this, this push against cash. But uh, I wanted to show you something that I found here. I was actually in the process of researching uh, just more coins, more Perth. Uh, I was actually researching the 2016. I was trying to find a picture of the pattern. Apparently the lunar series for 2016 is going to be the year of the monkey. I wanted to find a picture of that coin. I couldn't find it. I could find a 2004 year of the monkey uh, coin, but I could not find a picture of the 2016 year of the monkey uh, silver coin. So if any of you know where you can find that or if they've released that, let me know. Anyway, so I was looking for that and I happened to come across the Lunar Gold Bullion series numbers. Now, this is similar to the, uh, this is Lunar Series 2 
is similar to the Lunar Series 2 in the silver, runs from 2008 to 2015. And I just I was just pulling them up, just looking for some kind of anomalies. That's what I'm always looking for, are anomalies in, in the numbers. And you can see here, starting in the, the first year, it was the year of the mouse, it's 2008. Um, you can see that that allotment that they initially had, that 30,000 allotment of the one ounce coins, that, that was sold out. And it sold out subsequently in all the following years. And, and then you can see there's also a half ounce, a quarter ounce, a tenth ounce, and a twenty ounce, which is very twentieth uh, ounce, which is very interesting, um, because when we look at these figures, you can see that this twentieth ounce coin begins to really grow in uh, the figures. You can see here um, the tenth ounce is five thousand of them and five thousand of them. Then the next year, you can see we get. Uh, 10,000 and 5,000 and then the next year you can see we get 22,000 so that's that's a pretty big growth curve and 17,000 2011 uh, those are exceptions here uh, let's see yeah 2011 we get 21,000 and 22,000. 2012, we get 33,000 and 23,000. Still growing. Uh, the 2013 snake, we got 23,000 the 10th ounce, uh, 15,000 of the 20th ounce, so that we had a decrease there. And then in the year 2014, you can see we've got 34,000 of the 10th ounce and 20,000 of the 20th ounce. Now, what I want you to note here is that these sales figures, you can see that last updated January 30th, 2015. So there's only one month of this year's sales here. Now let's look at the 2015s. 2015 shows for the month of January 33,000 10th ounce coins and 58,000 20th ounce of that year of the goat gold coin. So they did three times the volume of the entire year of 20th ounce coins from the year before. They did three times that volume in one month because this is reported just up to January. So what is behind that? That is a dramatic increase. Now, admittedly, probably most of the Perth Mint Lunar series, especially those coins, are probably ordered in the first month of the year. So it's possible that the bulk of the business is done in that first month. Even if that's the case, we're already at three times the volume at this 20th ounce coins and matching the volume of the 10th ounce coins. So why would that be? Well, is it related to this? Maybe it is. Um, maybe people are starting to realize that they're going to take away cash. Now, it makes perfect sense if you think about it, that if they're going to try to get rid of cash, then you're not going to be able to transact in one ounce gold coins. You're not going to be able to transact in half ounce gold coins. But you may be able to transact in 20th ounce gold coins or 10th ounce gold coins or silver coins. Um, so it's almost like these bankers are trying to cause a bank run. Uh, certainly negative interest rates to the extent that the Swiss National Bank is doing it uh, would create an incentive and as they pointed out in this article 
um, these pension managers, they have a fiduciary obligation to get the most returns for the money. And if they can save 25,000 Swiss francs per year just by putting cash in a vault rather than leaving it in the bank, then they're actually obligated to do that. So this is this is the bankers basically they're burning down their own house these these people these keynesian these people are lunatics that are running uh the asylum um they they've come to the end of the game here um it's clear that they don't want people escaping from their system they want them you know in negative interest rates with their money stuck in the banks They've already talked about the bail-ins. They want to be able to take people's money, and they don't want people to have any alternative. Clearly, the two alternatives are going to be the precious metals and the cryptocurrencies. We can already see here, I think personally, that it's related, that the increase, the vast increase, and this is just one coin. I haven't looked at the others. In these fractional gold coins has something to do with the crackdown on cash. And if that's the case, it's almost like these bankers are going to make uh, a kind of black market economy come about. So let's get back to that original chart. I am completely convinced here with the Chinese stocks that this is just the very beginning. Um, this may be related as well. Uh, it, it, we've been hearing for the longest time about the Chinese trying to get their wealth out of China or trying to, you know, the, the currency becoming convertible. Um, it may just happen. It may just have happened that a lot of people realized what I realized that the Chinese stocks have been going sideways for a very long time, and that the Chinese economy has grown tremendously over that period of time. And if they're going to crack down and keep people from getting their money out or getting cash, well, then it's time to invest in the next best thing, and that's going to be Chinese stocks. So. Uh, a lot of stuff is coming down here, coming soon. A lot of people are thinking that September is the time frame. I'm not really sure, but people are definitely in the process now of raising cash and raising these fractional coins, and it's going to be interesting going forward. We'll talk to you next time.